I used to think there was no such thing as a genius, but after I read Ping Pong, that idea completely turned on its head. That is a quote by Ichiro Oda, the author of One Piece, on Taiyu Matsumoto's seminal sports manga, Ping Pong. As you may or may not have guessed by now, Ichiro Oda is my favorite author of all time. When I was browsing through the manga at my local bookstore, I read a quote from Oda in one of the One Piece color walks, which is basically just a compilation of quotes from Oda along with some really cool One Piece art. I literally turned to a random page and I saw the above quote. I was kind of floored. I thought I knew what Oda liked. He loves Dragon Ball. He loves Kingdom. But a sports manga? About ping pong? Really? How come I haven't heard of this before? Right after that, I dove into the other stack of manga and found the full ping pong series sitting there. I bought it right away and I came home. Now if you're anything like me, hearing your favorite author talk about something that they love is pretty much a surefire way for me to read or watch whatever they're talking about. I'll be very forthcoming in saying that the only reason I even decided to pick up ping pong is because Oda had stated that it was genius. I was even a little turned off from it and wasn't entirely convinced even after Oda's comments. I just wasn't a very big fan of the art style and honestly I've never read a sports manga. It's just never been something that has interested me and breaking into the genre seemed a little daunting. But as you dive into the series, it not only stands on its own, it also stands in the most creative parts of your mind. Because I think that you should read and decide this for yourself. I'm going to be getting into some very mild spoilers throughout, but it's nothing that is going to break your immersion or ruin the story for you. I dove in head first and ended up reading the entire manga in four days. I wanted to fly. I promise that sounds way cooler if you've read it, trust me. Ping Pong is a story about the talent and skill you're born with. What you work towards, despite of or in contrast to those skills. And how one grows when achieving, or more importantly, not achieving their goals. Throughout the series, we see multiple characters that go through not only very public, but very emotional ups and downs. People fighting for their last chance. People fighting to improve themselves. People who are fighting both at and away from the table. It's a story about how you go through life with or without your heroes, and how when one finally comes along, you know that everything is going to be okay. It's an incredibly deep story that focuses on a sport that most of us played only in our friend's basement, but it doesn't take much for us to realize that this story is so much more than that. While all of that is on the horizon, let's look at what we start off with. Like I said before, I was initially put off by the art style of ping pong. It appears very sketch-like and not very technically sound. In fact, to be very harsh, I didn't think it was good at all. But you see very quickly that Matsumoto has an art style that not only grows on you, but as you continue along, you start to see the small hints and the big moments that show how good of an artist and storyboarder Matsumoto is. His panel layouts only go up throughout the series. I was dead wrong, and if you thought the same, I hate to tell you, but you are too. We think the best way that Matsumoto proves this is by being able to balance two polar opposite facts. Ping pong, by its very nature, is a very fast sport. This is in contrast to manga, comics, written word, arts, which also by their very natures are not very fast mediums. Still images that convey speed, power, and action are extremely difficult to do, as any artist or author will tell you. Being able to show that things are moving at a breakneck speed by using static images is really, really difficult. But Matsumoto pulls this off in its entirety. We've spoken before about a technical ability to convey movement in my previous video, good manga making you turn the page. If you haven't seen it, I discussed some panels in depth regarding movement and flow, and I would recommend watching that to give yourself some foundation for this one. Let's look at how movement and sound is portrayed and visualized in ping pong. In this panel, you see shoes skidding across the ground. 
When I look at the track that's been left by the shoe, I see debris. It's like the soles and the rubber of the shoe are being torn apart by the seams. The stitching in the shoe is clear and evident, and the screech of the rubber on the ground shoots off with the sound effect, getting larger and more intense. I would say that it's a visual representation of how the pitch of the skidding of the shoe rises in tone. It puts you in the moment to get ready for the next swing of the paddle. Speaking of sound, it's not only used as a plot point in the story, but throughout the entire manga, you can see that Matsumoto uses it as a representation and a direct sign of who these characters are and what they stand for. Looking at the shoe panel with more context, we see one of the characters in the story, Wenj Kong, also known as China, I'll give you one guess why, is evaluating and dissecting the style of play between the two main characters of the story, Pico and Smile, in regards to how their match is going. He studies their styles, their strengths, their weaknesses. He looks at how they're controlling the game, and even who he thinks is holding back against the other. He uses it as a tool to find his next match. It's one of those types of scenes that I just die for in any manga or anime. It's characters with high skill that can pick up distinct cues from small details. Just look at the way that Matsumoto shows different sound effects and the way that they're drawn to convey style, effectiveness, and aggressiveness of hits. First, look at Wenge in the top left. Look what the sound effect behind him is written in a bold yet smooth cursive. In this image, Pico is thinking about the style and how gracefully and effortlessly that Wenge hits the ball. He envisions the style of the hit, and we see it as well, not only from our memory of Wenge's last match, but with something that easily could have just been another background illustration, instead of giving us something that conveys so much more to us as readers. Looking at the bottom left, Joe Koizumi, also known as Butterfly Joe, has an extremely smooth style of play, and the imagery shows that. The sound effect here is fused with an arrow, showing speed, direction, motion, and even sound at the same time. It's so, so incredibly cool. In the middle, read the sound effect and match it with Pico's face. What do you see here? In this, I see that there's a fiery rage and ferocity that paints Pico's face, and the sound effect also portrays that. The sound effect looks like flames are crawling off of it. On the right, visual cues combine with the noise to show what's going on. The noise here, it has cracks in it. It looks weak and brittle. It matches how successful the player's return attempt was. It was a total failure. If we got rid of the drawing of the ball directly to the right of the sound effect, you'd still know that it was a weak hit. That's how you know that Matsumoto is good. When you can take away elements and still convey the same message, you're doing something really well. If you're writing or drawing a story, you need to get to this level. Matsumoto could have just taken the easy way out. He could have just written in some basic noise effects. Maybe all he had to do was cycle between half a dozen styles or so to fill the space, or had an assistant fill the background, but he didn't. He used it as an extremely effective way to show the personality, playing style, and the abilities of the players who are putting themselves out there in the heat of battle. And I say battle because that's what these matches are. They are battles between two people. If you look at this character, Ryuchi Kazuma, also known as Dragon, you see that he's ready to go to war over this. There is an aggression and battery to how he plays. The viciousness in each strike is enough to have a visual impact on his opponent's confidence, not only in that match, but in their ability to play ping pong altogether. Seeing characters break after playing him shows you how he's just a force of nature that is aiming to destroy any opponent that gets caught in his wake. Let's look at the other visual cues that Matsumoto gives us along with these sound cues to show us why these battles are so captivating. We have small panels and instances where you can see the angle and velocity of Pico's shot in the corner. The noise effect formulates in our ears. The V-shaped line shows us the speed and angle that the shot goes off to. It's clearly out of reach for Pico's moment. But in larger swaths, we have entire matches 
that are basically played without a word being spoken between two parties. There's narration over action, but it reads like a conversation, and that's what makes this so brilliant. In Super Eyepatch Wolf's video, What Makes a Fight Scene Interesting, he goes into how any kind of fight is really just a dialogue between two people or groups. It's a conversation, a debate. I'll link to his video below. If you've never watched his material before, one, I'm shocked that my small manga channel was discovered before someone with 1.3 million subscribers, but I would highly recommend you go check him out. He deserves 10 times the amount of subscribers and views that he has. But in Ping Pong, we see those kinds of fights. It is a dialogue and a debate between two characters. When two characters start a match, there's no need for words once the ball is hit. There are visual cues that tell us this. Expressions on the opponent's face, the quick half a second before the ball is hit, the way that their body shifts and moves going into the action. These are all vital to how we understand the battle playing out between them. It's because Matsumoto is a master over these technical elements that we can elaborate to such depths in regards to the way he implements every single visual cue to give us knowledge about the styles they play, the sounds they make, and how that infuses with the characters' personalities. Speaking of personality, let's look at one of my favorite characters in this story, Wenj Kong. We see that characters in this story are almost shackled by their ability or inability to play at a high level, and how in turn that drives their characters moving forward. It shows the separation between those who are able to accept defeat and those who crumble to it. Again, I'm just going through general story beats and staying away from major plot points. When we first see Wenge, we're looking at the plane he arrives on. We learn that Wenge is a ringer brought in by a rival high school to win the regional ping pong tournament. He is kicked out of China's team and is brought to Japan to make a name for himself. Both in the story and in real life, ping pong is extremely popular in China. Characters even go so far as to say that Chinese players have an advantage over others purely due to them being Chinese and how ingrained it is into their society, how there are hundreds of years of Chinese ping pong and ingenuity backing up every stroke and serve. These Chinese players are portrayed as the embodiment of tennis. There's a reason why when he comes to Japan, Wenj is extremely cocky. He's annoyed that he even has to be there. He very obviously thinks that he's above this. The nation of Japan shouldn't be able to hold a candle to the power of China's ping pong. As a side note with this page, I love how Wenge is speaking down to everyone in Chinese, and his coach slash trainer is covering for him to make him seem more positive and team friendly, but he only still speaks to everyone through his translator. There's no effort of him trying to get close to his teammates and learn their language. I mean, the guy even combs his hair like a douchebag. Wen sees it as something where even playing ping pong with him should be seen as an honor to his opponents. Later on, Wen loses to someone who is much, much better than him, and it's not even close. How could this happen? He comes from a Chinese style of ping pong. He's playing with everything that he has, and he still loses. Throughout the entire series, we see planes representing his connection with China and wanting to go back home. He desperately wants to prove himself here in Japan so he can go back home and play with those who he believes he deserves to be playing with. When he lost, I expected him to throw a tantrum. He got embarrassed. He lost his chance to go back to China, and I was expecting him to blame everyone but himself. But instead, he has a very human moment with his coach. He says that this is the worst he's ever felt, but he knows that he needs to stay in Japan. He gets extremely humbled in the experience, and while he accepts defeat, a plane leaves in the background, along with his chance to go back home. When we see Wenj later, he's evolved. He's coaching and being a leader to his teammates. He's even started picking up Japanese, and while it isn't perfect, he's trying, which I think shows so much. He has been brought down from the arrogant man he was, who thought he was untouchable. He's human, and he's on Earth with everyone else now. 
It's these character moments that make me go from kind of liking a story to really loving it. It's real genuine depth and being able to look backwards at how they've evolved and where they're at now, whether it be through large or small gestures. So now that brings me towards the characters with the most growth in the series. Two people that I haven't mentioned that much in this video so far, Eco and Smile, the main characters. Without revealing too much about them, their lives are intertwined from childhood to the present, with Smile being a respectable player, even a great player, but Pico being the prodigy. Everyone on the team accepts him as this next coming of ping pong, but throughout the story, we see this dynamic shift, change, and develop as we read along and grow with these characters. Pico is basically your image of a kid that everyone knows is the best on the team. He's the person that everyone knows is going D1, to use an American term. He taught Smile how to play ping pong, and everyone continues to think that he's the greatest, and why not? He's even given himself that benefit of the doubt. But like many characters in ping pong, Pico learns more in defeat than he does in victory. He's been in victory all of his life, and that hasn't prepared him for getting eviscerated and destroying his mindset. He's hurt, humbled, and embarrassed. He feels an extreme high before the match, getting ready to prove his skills, and afterwards he crashes to the deepest of lows. What I think is great about this scene is that if this was a fight in Dragon Ball, for example, or in any of your other battle fantasy manga, there's a chance that Pico's character would have died there, since the fight was so one-sided. And I think that's what separates sports manga from others. The fights might as well end in death. These characters take it so hard when they lose that you feel every point against them tick by as they slowly realize that they can't stop what's about to happen. A mouse trying to stop a tsunami. This in turn really starts Pico's arc of stopping ping pong altogether, later dipping his toe back into the water, and starting all over again, all while colliding with the powers in ping pong that previously blocked his way. Smile, on the other hand, is built up to be more of the main protagonist than Pico is. While Pico has this natural talent that he can get away with, we learn that Smile has been holding back because of his dislike of destroying his opponent. He starts as wanting to have fun and go through the cycle of ping pong without having to step on anyone's throat. But this eventually doesn't become a reality, and there comes a time when he needs to become more ruthless and vengeful when it comes to his playing ability. He no longer pities his opponents or goes easy on them. He goes through with the ability to destroy and erase his opponents from being able to play. He turns into this cold calculated killer that is able to demolish his opponents no matter the consequences. He's able to lean into this ruthless persona that has abandoned his old way of lying for a new way of thinking, win at any cost. It doesn't matter what has happened in the opponent's life or circumstances. If he's able to destroy them, he will. The consequences of these losses are no longer worth thinking about. This smile wouldn't be recognizable to the one that we met in Chapter 1. It's these moments, philosophies, and mindsets that bring Pico and Smile back to each other's gazes and targets. It's the one thing that brings them both back together, and now these evolved versions of themselves have to collide in one way or another. In this cover chapter, look at the detail in regard to the similarity and differences between Pico and Smile. Their heads are turned at the same angle, their bodies have turned to retrieve the ball in the same way, and they've even hit the ball in basically the same spot on the paddle, but their grips are different. Up to this point, we've seen their philosophies of change play throughout the story, and here we can see a visual representation of that. While they may have started off with the same roots and origins, the point that they've ended up at is much different, even if all we do is see a small visual change in their grips. It's small details like this that make me so excited to read the next chapter of Ping Pong. In this story, no matter how long it takes or how high of a barrier it is, a hero always appears when you're in a pinch. When they're needed, a hero takes flight and evolves to the next level, no matter how impossible of a gap that might seem to be. So with all of that in the rearview mirror, was Oda right? Was he really on to something when he said that this series is genius? I really believe he was. 
The way that this series got me so excited over a sport is ridiculous. It's not just about the sport, it's about how the sport impacts the lives and futures of those who play. When we see their matches, whether it be the first match or unbeknownst to them, the last match that they ever play, characters trade so much to get to this next level only to fail and grow. This growth manifests at and away from the ping pong table. Very few can shake that off and rise to the next level. Some quit immediately, some slowly fade away, and some rise to the next level, take their revenge, and some have to be the new head that wears the crown. One character put it perfectly. You'll surely understand one way or another. Heavy is the head that wears the crown, the pain of honor, the weight of expectations, the solitude and suffering. And finally, you'll feel that your efforts were meaningless and your victory was in vain. Rising to the top doesn't always mean victory. It's all of this, the art, the style, the characters, the growth they experience and the way that they change. All of this comes together to make this panel flow. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. One of my videos finally passed a thousand views, which is just crazy to me. So I want to thank you so much for helping me hit this milestone. Something fun that I found while researching this video was that Matsumoto actually drew this photo for One Piece's magazine a few years ago. I love how he drew Luffy in his own style and how he incorporated his seagull into the picture. I think it's just a really fun way for two legendary authors to praise one another. That about wraps it up for me, so if you liked the video, please like and subscribe, it would really mean a lot. I'm looking to make videos kind of be a monthly thing from now on, so look forward to seeing you next month. If you have a topic in mind, please comment it down below and I'll see if I can make something worth watching. Thanks again for stopping by. This has been Panel Flow.